Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 8 of the Rape Podcast. Today, we'll be talking about the a bunch of priests, Elijah Muhammad and a bunch of others. This is probably the most craziest shit I've seen. I don't know how a lot of people fall for these beliefs. Elijah Muhammad is to be the first priest that we'll be going over, and he's the uh, Islamic priest, and Nif can explain more on that. So, Elijah Muhammad was known for bringing a, um, bringing a very radical level of Islam to America in the 60s through to, from about the 50, from the 60s to about the 70s. Uh, he was very black, um, black supremacist, more or less. He felt the white race deserved to die and was inevitably going to die, that white pe that white people were the devil. Um, was fear <laughs> there were a lot of conspiracy theories about him killing uh, Malcolm X because Malcolm X openly when he quit Islam or not quit Islam but started questioning his beliefs in it to a degree. Uh, it's believable because this guy's fucking insane. Like yeah, this Elijah Muhammad um, dude's fucking crazy. He he felt people he felt black people came from Mars and uh, white people went there <laughs> enslaved them and take them took them to Earth to work on cotton fields. Basically, it's it's very very out there. Um, a very interesting <laughs> dynamic, but that's just one of many things on the docket. Um, I will address the fact that we did have the plan for the uh, debate, but I feel that is not. Um, I feel with the debate, there's a lot going on with it. There is a lot still coming out. There is a lot still to address. Yeah. And I think that will be for. Well, a don't worry. We're still going to cover. We're still going to. We're still gonna cover it. it we're just gonna wait until like a lot of stuff's more verified, a lot of stuff comes out, and that way, like, we don't put ourselves in hot water because this shit is just like, it's like a lot of, it's just insane shit, and like people label you this and that. So we just want to make sure, like, when we do cover the, the debates and shit, that we do it the right way without like looking like we're biased or looking like we're Nazis or pro this, pro that. I mean, overall, it's going to be a neutral stance. I mean, when it comes to the debates, we're going to look at it from both angles and all angles possible. Um, for the most part, though, I do feel like the the uh, preacher stuff is going to be a fun episode. It's going to be a fun little adventure into the mind and the psyche of uh, how fucking crazy people can be. Like we got how a, uh, stupid, like uh, people had how like in, like you. People could will believe anything. People yeah. will literally believe anything. So and that's how like this episode's just gonna prove that because people like believed Elijah Muhammad. They believe all these other priests. They believe the most craziest shit. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Cold Fire can get his uh, get the first thing on the docket up, and we can go from there. Uh, we probably aren't going to cover the full Elijah speech. It is about eight minutes, six to eight minutes. Um, and it's just so wacky that I don't think we'll really need to address all of it at one time. But yeah. in portions would probably be best, I feel. But let's get into it. You should remember all right, Kofi, that black could not play. have been behind white. Because it's just impossible to take white out of black. But you can take white out of black. But not How black out of white. Shit seriously? All right, we're going to pause it right this, here. This is already... Uh, so he's talking about interracial couples. He's talking about not pure pure mixed black people and not pure mixed white or pure white yeah, people. Yeah, he's and, like, you can't take... You, you can't yeah, take white out of black. Yeah, it, it's like I said, we're, we're doubling into what, like 20 seconds of this, and it's already starting off on a downhill climb. And what's crazy yeah. is in our modern day right now, in our modern day and age, people are still believing this guy, like full through, uh, full throttle completely, to the degree that um, he's still a historical figure and he's still, con uh, he's not even controversial. Even though. Wow, like how do people still believe like i think he definitely needs to be more controversial because the shit like 20 seconds in he's already saying he's already looking like he's 
crazy and unhinged like a normal person would be like yeah I, well like, you gotta think of the crazy. well the thing is triton is you gotta think of the times right like we're we're talking about like the 60s segregation was a problem there was a lot of black and white hate a lot of black and white crime a lot of black and like it, it was a it was a melting pot it was a time of political discourse and civil discourse to where you couldn't go to yeah. the grocery store people certain people in certain parts of the city that kind of thing and so to a lot of people they felt this and understood this so when you look at it in that kind of telescopic view you can see why he had a following however um it doesn't justify it it's just an example of one layer of hate that existed and still does and the yeah, people still and... hold on to this and it's not healthy and it's not good in any caliber and um and that's the thing like race and i'll say this on the record racism on both sides both white and black it's is wrong like 100 percent. like it's yeah not okay. no no doubt like 100 percent. um the thing is though is like looking at the times in this time period it doesn't surprise me that a pastor like this blew up to the level that he did um i mean he was just taking advantage of the social climate and that's what everybody's doing now with uh kind of everything going on politically with uh our country with america the world almost with all these conflicts and stuff like people are gonna take whatever they can to their advantage and they're gonna run with it and like like everyday joes are gonna hear it out and they're some are gonna follow it some are gonna disbelieve it i mean at some the are end gonna of the, actually have brains some of them are just gonna yeah follow whatever they hear yeah but we can go and continue makes you be the first regardless to what people say you are the first because we can't make this our color from white no sir it has been experimented many times by the enemy to see if he could not claim first too or equal as first but he can't do it it's impossible now he's going up, Allah opened up the heavens as the whole Quran teach you, to let him go up there and peep in. And then bring him down to the bottom of hell. Because he's not able to stay up there. He's not able to stay nowhere, only where Allah permits him to stay. Then Allah takes them away from that at will. Anytime he will, he take him away. Oh, oh the white man go to the moon. Um, can you uh, skip ahead like a little bit because it's just going into uh, yeah. the religious side of uh, things? 220, yeah, right there. 220? Yeah, 220 is fine. Right. Yeah. It's our Mars. Our people, so God have taught me. Actually, you could pause it, because this one and point that... I do want to ask. Yeah, you might want to... How wanna... come he hates, hates white people hates white people so much, but wasn't the sky a part of the KKK? Yeah. They called him the modern-day Black Hitler at the time, and supported him. And it's partially responsible for Black Panthers existing, when you think about it. So what, like, <laughs> what the fuck does this guy hate white people so much, but he's willing to join like the most racist clan out there uh it doesn't <laughs> you got me there like it's, it's it like keep in mind that's just one example of him breaking like his words because in like in islam right you get married you're, you're supposed to keep that marriage pretty much secured in safety right like it's kind of the same thing with christianity where it's like one wife Islam doesn't really have that though, because they're more of a. You can have multiple wives in Islam. But this dude straight up cheated on his wife, divorced her, and got with. Uh, and had like three kids with another woman. And it, it's just kind of crazy. But uh, I think the. I think my favorite part of this, and you kind of skipped over it, um, you might want to go to like 215 or 2. two uh, two Yeah, like 200. Two minutes flat would probably be the best. 
um, because this is old footage. Um, my favorite part of this is when he when he when he says that they're from Mars. I love that so much. Oh yeah, I play that. That's yeah, funny. I play it. What the? Fuck? It's great. I love it too. We made. Let him go and peep at it. Now he's making instruments to look at the civilization on Mars. Well, when he sees what's on Mars, he won't see no mark of his. It's our Mars, our people, so God have taught me. And that he didn't know they was there until just a few days ago. <laughs> he used to look at Mars and just call it. Yeah, so he, he so the whole rhetoric here is uh, Allah went to Mars and he wouldn't see the mark of our people, and therefore he would be displeased in us. And so he legitimately believes people came from Mars, that they came from Mars, that Islam, uh, or sure Islam came from Mars. Yes, sure? yes, he says it himself. <laughs> There was a. Are you I think sure he. Not just saying that. I mean, there's no way. Like, you have to be like super. Oh, oh baby, to look at this. That black people came from Mars, or anybody, or that any human came from Mars. In fact. Um. Yeah. Like. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He believed. Um. That's the problem. And at <laughs> one point, I want to point out to. They claim that white people make it all about race, but. But they literally are the ones that make it most about race. Like they literally bring up the colors. They bring up, they they yeah. separate black from white. It's so, like I don't think black and white should be separated. I think because we're all people. But these but people that claim that white people are so racist are the same people that separate themselves from us. So he had a he had a book he wrote called The Theology of Time, where he fully addresses this. And he was mentioning how there's Martian phoenix-like faces and massive pyramids and a complex city on Mars, because he believes what there the is. What the fuck? Yeah, like this is not. <laughs> believe- this is not a full-blown like. Nah, this is bullshit. No, this is this is his full belief in 1976. Yeah, and the fact that. He- had a following like ladies the, and gentlemen this and this gentleman came because of the f- so in 76 they took uh pictures of mars right with a probe nasa did and like mm-hmm. they zoomed in on a rock and it looked like a face so then he was like yes we came from mars it's proof even though that the brain naturally will like that's the problem with a lot of mars photos like the rabbit on the moon i don't know if you ever heard of that where like if you look at the moon at night or like photos of the moon, you can see like the shape of a rabbit. Yeah, um, it's our own mind creating that image. It's not the actual image. It's like those double image. Yeah. Um, it's like those double image. You know, uh, what are they called? Like uh, a y- the like the not well the I ink. Yeah, the f- ink would be the best example. The but there's like a what is that called? Var ink pop. The ink blots are a good example, but yeah, basically that it, it tests the right and the left side of the brain, kind of is where that came from, or what you see in it. And um, yeah, but like I see images, like in the like sometimes, like in the moon, I see I see like images like all the time. Like, yeah, I see images of my. And head. so this guy saw one of, one of those images and it said, doesn't "Mean I'm." Yeah, <laughs> and said that's proof. Oh, that's proof. That's proof. Yeah. Oh, me, that we came from Mars, y'all. Yeah, and, uh, but this guy was just fucking crazy. And he said that, uh, he had this concept, um, in that book, uh, he believed that white people went to Mars and that's where the slave trade came from. That, that white people created all the slave trade in the world by stealing people. Oh, so that means, so according to, according to this idiot, we, um, White people flew to Mar to Mars, even though we didn't have no technology, he, no nothing, no mind. rocket ships to even do that. He and believes kidnapped this. all the black people for slaves in 1967. And people, and now the big theory is the Earth is the Earth is flat. So like here we are, right? It, it just kind of goes full circle. Like I feel like every couple yeah, of thousand years, we're just gonna have some like wild conspiracy like this. 
and I love it. Uh, that that's the only reason I wanted to pull this video up. I'll be oh, honest. This is crazy. Like, <laughs> which will be like a bunch of crazy conspiracies all with like the summer. Yeah, I mean we got a lot planned and shit, but um, do you want to keep going with this speech, Triton, or like you want to move on to the rest of the docket because we got a good bit. We can move on to the rest of the docket. I think we can the fact that elijah <laughs> muhammad's an idiot we, i mean we could go further nobody. like there's there's a million pieces of evidence all over wikipedia on him and like i still believe so um the biden administration um i'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this now because uh so the people that the two people that they arrested and admitted to assassinating malcolm x um they believe those two people were connected to this elijah muhammad because Malcolm X was dropping out of the belief, or not the belief, but like, well, I think it was the belief, but mostly the radical side of it, and was more towards anti-government, more or less. Like he was always anti-government. He was also anti-white, but not like he was. Ju he was just as bad in terms of anti-white. But you know, um, I don't understand anti-white because it's like we're supposed to be like, oh, we we don't like racism, but we'll, well be anti-white. It's like that you're no better at that point. Well, it's because they gotta they they tank. It's the same thing with racism on all sides. It has to come from like a generation of a reasonable concept of suffering or something involved. Yeah. That's what it stems off of. It stems off of like um, past history that's not healthy for that people, right? Like, like right now we live in a civilized age. I would say for the most part, where racism is still actively occurring it's it's no doubt it is you can't say racism uh, is completely gone but you know there ain't racism people... every race though that's what people need to understand racism but will happen no matter what here, but we need to work together here's, to, to make it less here's the difference though right muhammad's yeah. upbringing i would feel is a big reason for this because he likely was like in his 20s or 30s when like in the in 1940s i think he was like 20 years old so he was seeing the world and how black people were being treated during that segregation time no doubt there was segregation in the 60s but it probably wasn't i mean i'm not gonna say it wasn't as bad but like there was still segregation and i think that's where it really stemmed off of was treating people yeah. differently and horribly and so you know that's where he got this ideology that white all white people are bad but there's I mean, if you watch American History X, if you watch, like, a million other things, there's examples. There's a million examples of why people get in that headspace. There's a million examples of why people fly off the hinge and end up on this kind of level of thinking from the stuff surrounding them. And it's it's a good example of, like, where to recognize a mental health decline. Like anybody sitting in their house 24 seven browsing the internet is inevitably going to find something or eventually stumble into that rabbit hole where they end up down a path they shouldn't be and believe in some crazy shit. That's inevitable. That's the human mind. But I think, uh, with, with like old world, you know, beliefs like this, um, it's more, they didn't have the internet, right? So this is just an example of human decency and how humans are horrible. But even now, by like, default. Even now like, with the internet, even now with the internet technologies for you to do the research, just still people that believe Elijah Muhammad, dude, regardless of I only, the I only knew about this guy because... Disproving it. I only knew about this guy because a black dude I worked with at Taco Bell absolutely hated me. Because I was white. And believed this preacher like hardcore. He would listen to this exact speech every day. And like embody <laughs> that rage. And it was. The dude was like on drugs 100%. Like he would come into work tripping Stop. out. Yeah like anybody who actually believes it has to be on something. Or it has like, something mentally like wrong with them. Like there's just no way like. Yeah. Even as and, someone who has all like and watching this speech there's no way i could take this seriously at all like oh black people came from mars and aha uh -huh, white people came to mars to enslave us like that just like, that sounds like something you'll say in a movie like yeah, a comedic movie it, it's definitely wild 
And um, I guess we can go ahead and move on from this. Started. Honestly. Yeah. What was the next thing on the docket? I think it's the Kenway thing. Yep. Yeah. Is it still Copeland. Before we play it, just to give like a brief summary of it, so the audience knows. Um. So this it. pastor was known for uh really like not caring about poor people and openly admitting that he only wanted rich people in his churches, and that he didn't. I thought being a pastor, like you're supposed to care for the poor. You're supposed to care about everybody. Like that's the point of being a pastor is you're helping everybody, and not you're not supposed to judge anybody. Yeah, you think that, but he literally said that he would never fly commercial because everybody's a demon on the planes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like that's legitimately that's legitimately him. And he's this known for guy being... definitely sounds like a grifter. Like there's no way people actually like this like, how dude do you follow these people. Like, this he's, dude, like, he's definitely a grifter. This dude bought Tyler Perry's jet for like billions of dollars off of his what? donors. Yeah. It's and uh really yeah it's it's actually in this clip and he's just known for being a wacky character you should full screen this cold fire if you can that'd be great he's just such a wacky character i wanted to add him to the docket because it's great is it working okay? sounds like it yeah Why you can is... go and play it why have you said that you won't fly commercial? You said that it's like getting into a tube. Get in a long tube. With a bunch of demons. With a bunch of demons. Yeah, I love I love that. I love this one. It's great. It, Stop it. Like, like, Stop it right now. Hmm. Believe. <laughs> and she will be made over. <laughs> so Stop wacky. That fear right now. <laughs> you think terrible. that people that fly commercial are demons? <laughs> Give me a chance to talk, sweetheart. I'll explain this to you. But it's a biblical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It doesn't have anything to do with people. You listen to me? Right. Uh, this dope-filled world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown! The, the, the wind of God! The wind of God! On you. I told on you, you, like, man, like, when I make you a dock and I make a dock. <laughs> And you'll never be back. I'm just cheese, standing bro. here just thanking praise God. And all of a sudden, I, I heard the Lord say, see that, that tree right over there? Whoa. <laughs> I saw it. I could just <laughs> see it. Are you hearing me? <laughs> mm -hmm. This guy definitely. I need a bicycle player. I'm gonna have a fucking stroke, bro. It took me a while to get over my mask. Save here. I'm definitely Save I'm about to Just pause it real quick. George Floyd. <laughs> One of the worst things that's you ever come sense. along is make such a big deal out of retirement. You're talking about retirement to a 16-year-old kid. I mean, come on, man. And I have a lot of natural <laughs> gas on our property. Didn't know that, did you, babe? Now I do. Yeah, you do. I had a young African-American. He said, nobody gonna scheme. give me no job. Is so I, what is a job? Bust. I'm a plantation Shit, boss. I'm yeah. him, boy. You put that all over there and you get done with that, I'm gonna give you another job. You gotta oh, go do good. this it's, over here. It's over. That's plantation. Oh, it's Amen. Do you really well, believe that positive. human beings are demons? Yeah. Uh, skim through it a little I bit. Mean, I think we're pause. good with this. <laughs> 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 He's so. Oh, it's still going, bro. There's still more. Right. We gotta. Lying, I'm yeah. gonna be honest. There is so much to cover on this guy. I I want to watch the full four minutes before I do. <laughs> And don't you ever say I do. With a bunch of demons. I don't know what I'm going to do. My goodness, this whole thing's going to affect the business. We're not going to get anything from China, and I'm not going to be able to solve it. Oh, God. Disguise. I'm going to lose my car. Like mm. Yeah, you probably will. And I'll tell you, your car's in danger. It may not be in danger from this, <laughs> but you're in a good position to wreck it right now. Right. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, 
<laughs> I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, how much? I execute judgment <laughs> on you, Satan. <laughs> you destroy her. You kill her. You get out. You break your power. You get you off break this your nation. power. I demand you judgment on you. Power. I break demand. Power. I demand. Oh, my God. I demand a I vaccination demand. to come immediately. Yes. Vaccination come immediately. Uh <laughs> <laughs> how, like, how do people take these people? Okay, you can stop it. Yeah, you can stop. But how do you how do people take these people seriously? Hey, like, I'm gonna go to his Triton. Let's be honest history. here. Let's be honest here. We go into his church. One hundred percent. I don't give a but fuck how crazy he might demons. be. That shit is funny as fuck. That dude is good. Demons, There's a. We gotta we gotta <laughs> join up with them. We gotta fight the demons, y'all. We gotta we gotta, we gotta bring the bows the out and hunt down them demons, man. He's just gotta point them out to us. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely. this is the ultimate Fallout pastor from like fucking like if you put him in a Fallout series like in the Fallout game, top tier. He's up there. Like this should be a 100%. companion to Fallout. I'll definitely play. <laughs> I'll definitely play. I've never played Fallout, but if this guy gets added as like an NPC this, villain, I definitely this, play it. Th I bet you there's a mod for him in New Vegas. There has to be. There has, there has to, be. to be. If there's not, if there's not, someone needs to make one ASAP. Hundred percent. Demons on the tube of the airplane, bro. <laughs> I didn't know the edits were that good. Oh my god. Uh, that that's great. Uh, no, nah, this guy is known for just, uh, embezzling money out of his church like fucking crazy. He, uh, owns, like, a multi-thousand acre ranch, uh, with his property that they discovered oil on, and then he just made bank off of it. Doesn't help anybody, really. Doesn't do anything for the poor. Doesn't care about anybody but himself and his congregation, or, well, congregation being his upper group of his, like, church. So, like, dude's a complete, like comedy show and i think the reason he acts so wacky is either cocaine or he's just out of his fucking gourd there's there's Definitely. no other I mean, there's not teeth. a lot to like, talk if you about go back in the video like his like his teeth literally is yellow as shit like, he's definitely <laughs> on something he definitely doesn't his fucking teeth people people theorize that he's possessed by a demon and i i hope that's true because this is the best if every pastor now he talks about like he talks about Demons so much it's like he's projecting he's definitely projecting like he's like we need to fight the demons if, it's like you need to fight your own demons like he definitely has some demons in him 100 percent. if if he is like possessed i want every pastor to be possessed by the same demon this would make church better <laughs> i would go to church every yeah. day of the week if this is what it was like He's Honestly, got the I would showmanship get, down, bro. Like, I would literally go those and like, trigger, take, like those hot fire trigger words that make you want to sit there. I would there. film church every day. Like if if church was like this, I would film church every day and, and post it on my channel. This is an example of a ba of a morally bad pastor, right? Because he's just blowing money, being crazy, right? But he's With, funny, like, like a lot. But Muhammad, this is a like, funny. He's like, not like Elijah. Like Elijah Muhammad's like an idiot, but this guy's an idiot. But he's also like funny as I don't, shit. I don't think like, he's it's an just idiot. so funny. I, I think he knows how to act to make that bank. I think it's a show. And yeah, he's probably he's a piece of shit for like not caring about people. But let's be honest here. That's every. That, that's just about almost every pastor. That's a lot that, of people that, to be honest. That's every like it's not just pastor. pastors, but that's every like that's every mainstream like job like pastors, news reporters, commentators, um, politicians. Like nobody Models. gives a fuck about you in this world. Like, yeah, you gotta think yeah, about even like one. even like random people like no really cares about like people really need to start caring more about each other but a lot of people just stop caring about each other all and right it's sad so cold fire wh wh what are you feeling about uh, Ken uh kenneth copeland isn't he the best isn't he like the pastor you want at your fucking marriage like imagine him at a wedding i now pronounce this demon gone and you a holy matrimony just full, full. <laughs> like, he reminds me of one of those old ass, like, pastors in, like, every Western that's just really crazy. 
That's what he reminds me of. And that's why I love Honestly, him. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if some I don't, people just... I don't care how bad he is as a human... Like, I don't care how bad he is as a human being. I just love his the- theatrics. Like, his theatrical side is just the best. Like, he's someone you to go to the bar to have a to have a beer with. And then he automatically busts into a bar dance on the table. And just starts dispelling demons from people. Can't you see it, Triton? <laughs> Can't you see him in like I a skit show? Is. It's so good. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely see him in a skit show. Like he definitely needs to be like in a move all star like movie, bro. <laughs> definitely be more of a billionaire. I, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look up later if he has any movies or any documentaries. And I gotta watch them. I gotta get them. Like I, I, I would have, I'm definitely gonna. Watch I'll have a little one. shrine to this pastor. In fact, in we might cover the sky. Like we might cover the sky in future episodes. Like he just sounds like a he's fucking content a making machine. He is such a fucking. He's such guy. like he's such a guy. Like is he still alive? Like is he still living? I think so. Yeah, it has to be. He's got all he, that money, man. Like ain't no way. He's he gonna did. see this video and be like, "Look at these! Look at these porn these people demons! jealous of me! These demons!" <laughs> One smoking out of his poor mouth. demons. <laughs> the Sacrifice sulfur. the poor demons. <laughs> Let's kill the poor demons. You probably release our addresses. And- nah. Let's go I kill think, those I poor think he demons. would pray for us, Triton. And I would love to have him pray for me. I would love that. Hey, like, he's um, not Kenneth like, Copeland, he's not like if you're watching this, evangelic- hold on. Kenneth Copeland, if you're watching this and you want to come on our show and pray to give us like content and clout. You're more welcome to he can come give on. Us, he can give us that righteous zeal we need to fight the other demons of the world right now. Yeah, you need the to give us demons. courage, and you need to give us weapons and, and advice on how to fight the demons. <laughs> he would, you know what game he would be great in? Fucking um, Wolfenstein or Castlevania. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, he'd be great. Yeah. He would be great. All right, so we're going to move on. I he, think would, the... he would be a really... He would be, he would be like... He would literally... <laughs> A great was a one on one villain too. He really would. He would make you feel bad to be the player. Um, is this the one? He would be like he would actually be he would be a better version of Malastare. Like they should replace Malastare with this guy. <laughs> you have the uh, you have the clip right, Coldfire. You should stop uh, the it. Zeppelin one or oh, now nah, we're moving on to uh, Rapture. The zip line is gonna be garbage. Alright, so this one? Yeah. The going to camp yeah. one? Yeah, we're going to camp, Triton. You ready? We're going to camp. Alright, ex- explain, uh, like, like the other one, just explain, like, All right, context so full screen it, and then I'm going to explain it. So right. I can't remember the name of this pastor, but he basically swindled a bunch of people to cash out their houses, their cars, and everything, and just go camping because the rapture was coming. And uh, he ended up making bank, getting in trouble, and... Uh, this video is a really good analysis of it, and I love this YouTuber, um, internet historian. He's like top tier fucking guy. His edits are amazing. His like vocals are amazing. His video progress is amazing. You'll love it, Triton. It reminds me a lot of the last video we just watched, but a bit better. Um, not better, but like more uh, informative. And so this this guy had the internet believing he cracked the code in the Bible that gave him the awareness and the mathematics to know when the end of the world was happening and then he released a date and it's the a fuck <laughs> yeah that that's the logic in it basically and um yeah so he swindled a bunch of people and then a lot of people got mad well not mad but like he ended up getting investigated and like a bunch of other shit it's pretty wild uh we can go ahead and start playing it cold fire just relax everything's totally serene you're floating through a cloud. Like the sun is warm on your face. The end is nigh. A prophecy has been foretold. The rapture is coming. And we have the specific date. It's not the best Soon the believers will rise and the impure will be left below. So repent, sinner. Repent. Get your affairs in order. Take your preparation H. That's preparation for heaven. Because the world will officially end. 
on May 21st, 2011. Damn, that's like Wait, what? Birthday. May 21, there's going to be a terrific earthquake, way, way greater than anything that the Earth has ever experienced, and that'll be the beginning of Judgment Day. That's before my styles before Actually, six. how do I sign that? In late 2010, a campaign was launched to save some souls. They suited up, took to the streets. But it was more than just placards and flyers. Soon they were joined by a caravan of five RVs roaming the country, spreading the good word about the rapture. Thousands of people took it seriously. Many began selling their possessions. They were maxing out credit cards, taking on debt. Even the news picked up on it. The end is near. Advertising was put on bus stops, in subways. A big expensive billboard was put up. Then another. Then another. Then 5,000 more. In fact, this yeah, quickly this is, uh... became the most expensive single event advertising campaign ever. Totaling nice. over $100 million just to tell people about a rapture on May 21st, 2011. How the heck did this happen? Harold Camping. So who is this hardcore gangster rapturist, Harold Camping? He was one of the biggest figures in Christian media. He had a show, Open Forum, hosted by his company, Family Radio. In 2010, it was a media empire worth over 70 million dollars right, his message went out on over 200 so this guy had three things that was necessary for the rapture money a network of communication to release this kind of information and charisma that that is just wild that a pastor in America was able to convince thousands of people with like not only like thousands of people right but he also was able to put up 5 million billboards basically like the biggest campaign any church has ever made do you can like Triton? Can you even imagine the amount of effort that was put in for this campaign? It's just crazy, and it's still crazy that like people like keep falling for this. Like this all sounds stupid. Like I think I may remember this from <laughs> me. Yeah, like. A lot of people might like a lot of people in the audience that are watching might remember a lot of the stuff that will cover. They might. A lot of people actually like talk about this stuff so it's like a lot, of, a lot of the audience might already know about this I, stuff. Uh, some may not some may... i remember watching news about it as a kid when i was like younger um i've watched news about it when i was a kid too because i used to watch stuff like this when i was like younger because my sister used to watch a lot of this stuff and used to make me watch it too. I was about. She used to be like a big like conspiracy theory. I was like thirteen or fourteen at the time, and uh, I was probably like twelve, eleven when I was. I remember. Watching this shit. I remember my family like being paranoid about it, and my dad being pissed because he had to work and he assumed this shit might actually happen. My family always told me never to believe in this shit. <laughs> 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 well, like, I mean, the two thousands was a weird time too. Yeah. Like you, this that is ten, uh, this is what uh, ten years after nine eleven happened, right? Well, even like so. the times were in are weird. I'm not gonna lie, like the times were in are getting like dude. I just and I, weirder. I just feel like I'm getting older and wiser every year, and time is just same here. That's how I by. feel. Like I know I'm young, but it feels like I'm like more older and like more mature. Like, like I can't. It's just hard, like waking up and thinking, "Damn, I'm nineteen. Because I've always, you know, thought myself as a kid, but now that I'm an adult, I'm like, damn, 
I'm actually a grown ass man now. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um. But nah. Like this whole thing had a lot of families. Like my family wasn't like hyper religious. We were. I was raised Methodist for the most part. And like, the, so they didn't believe in the rapture overall. But like, they were they were joking about it a little bit. I believe in the rapture. I mean, it's gonna happen eventually. I don't think we'll ever know when. That's that's according to structure. Yeah, no, we'll you know, never but... know when. And the fact that a lot of people claim to know, it's like stupid. I usually don't believe because, like, says in the Bible, we're not gonna know. So all these people claiming to know are literally going against like their own religion when they claim to know and when they're lying and saying that they know, and they actually don't. Yeah, but we can go and continue from here. I just wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Radio stations across the United States and many more around the world. His listenership? Millions. And when he says the world will end, a decent sized contingent believed it. Now, hold on. I can see Anyone the comment section is... filling up with edgy atheists and skeptics already. Listen, at first I also didn't believe Mr. Camping. I get it. There have been many people to predict the rapture before and get it wrong. But wait. Give him a chance. <laughs> I looked at all the scientific data I could find, like carbon-14 dating or potassium-argon dating. <laughs> this time, it's different. Camping is coming at you with irrefutable evidence of the rapture because he's using math. This is not just a bit. This is actually how he calculated the rapture. So, Jesus died on April 1st, 33 AD. Now take the year 2011. That's a difference of 1,978. We times that by 365.2422, and that gives you the number of days it's been since that, including leap years. That equals 722,449. Now keep that number in mind. Keep it in your head. Atonement. Now that's five. Complete. Oh, that's sense? ten. And <laughs> heaven is seventeen. Now we times them all together and look this at this. This is actual 850. math. Eight hundred and fifty. Then we square that, and that's seven hundred and twenty-two thousand five hundred. A difference of fifty-one. Fifty-one days plus April first, two thousand eleven, right, equals. So whenever y'all are talking, uh, I have the video playing kind of high, so that way we can make sure it gets heard. But uh, what were you saying, Triton? I was saying, like, how do people, like, fall? Like, the, this whole math doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> it doesn't. Like, how was do Jesus actually born on April 1st? Near? Is that even known? Yeah, it is. He was technically not born on Christmas, so right? a lot of Christians believe. Uh, hey, no, no. I, you know, he is born. He was born on December 25th. He was born on Christmas. That's the that's why we celebrate Christmas. I mean, sure. All these people. I want to know. I want to. Like you know what? I really want to find out. But like, I if if Jesus was it born on April when Jesus like resurrected, because that's uh, I don't uh, technically this Easter's like happens randomly. We don't know. Like we don't know the true date he resurrected. Oh yeah, because I mean calendars. Calendars also changed over generations in time, too. That's why the dates aren't yeah. accurate. And there were only 354 days in in Jesus' time, apparently. But, I don't really? know. Really? Yeah. There was, uh, according to their chronogra uh, chronograph at the time, there were 354 states that Jesus was born during Wait, the Are we watching ship. the whole, like, 20... Yeah, we are. We are, because it is fucking good, and it is worth it. Trust me. All right, keep playing, then. All right. May 21st, 2011. You did it, Mr. Camping. You've cracked the code. And needless to say, his skeptics were left destroyed by facts and logic. Even the ones who pointed out that he predicted the rapture once before in 1994 in a Louis Thoreau documentary. 1994 will be the last day of the final tribulation period. But shut up, shut up. He's got more to say than just the date. My boy is about to tell you how the whole thing is going to go down. So God's going to snatch up all the good boys, about 200 million of us. Everyone else? Pets? Even the cute ones? Sorry dudes, you're getting left behind. 
Then at 6 p.m. exactly on Christmas Island, earthquakes are going to start dootling all over the place, rolling their way across the earth, taking out almost everyone at exactly 6 p.m. according to their all time right, zone. so we can go and pause. Those earthquakes will then... Why Christmas Island? Wouldn't it be Israel or Jerusalem or, like, literally any other place from, like, Bible context and scripture? Why Christmas Island? Yeah. Triton. You're, you're the... You know, you're the guy behind God right now, so I'm I'm curious on this. I don't know. I really don't know. Like, <laughs> why, like what is what is Christmas Island? Um, it's an island named Christmas. That's all I know about it. <laughs> like, I don't think. I mean, it might. I've never heard of Christmas Island. The church has never said Christmas Island. Like no one's ever, no one in my family's ever. So I might actually like ask my family about it. And be like, hey, what, what is Christmas Island? I'm gonna look it up real quick. I might send them this. <laughs> <laughs> is it in the Bible? I don't think so. Like I've never heard of Christmas Island in the Bible. Like I've been to many churches growing up. They've never once talked about Christmas Island ever. Never talked about Christmas Island in history classes, like, ever. I might, I might make a poll on Twitter and be like, have you heard of Christmas Island? <laughs> I might do that. It's a beautiful place from what I'm seeing, honestly. Like, um, Christmas Island, I, I don't know anything about it. It's in the Indian Ocean. It's south of Java, northwest of Australia. I want to know why he chose Christmas Island. And apparently it got its name by, uh, in, in 1643, um, by Captain William Minors. I'm probably massacring that name, but, um, it became an Australian territory in 58 and got its own flag mining and wildlife and, asi uh, and it's asylum seekers type stuff. It, it's, I, I don't know, man. Like it, I don't, I mean, it might be. They might be going off of something somewhere, but I don't think it's ever been mentioned in the Bible. Like, I'm even looking into it, and, like, I'm looking it up, Christmas Island in the Bible, and I'm not finding nothing. Yeah, it's never been mentioned. I don't think. I mean... But you say Christmas Island's near, like, Australia? Australia and Java, and in the Indian, in, oh, in the Indian maybe, Ocean. Maybe, you know what... I know a guy that know. I think Oz might know. Like Oz, like one of our friends, definitely knows about that place. Like, probably. It's near Australia. I, mean, I mean, it's got some history, but like, I don't think it's known for anything now beyond a vacation spot, from what I'm seeing. It's definitely weird. I wonder why. Um, I mean, like, Christmas is the birth of Jesus, and so Christmas yeah. Island. I mean, that's that's the only connection I can assume. And that's a stretch. Well, I thought Jesus, like, Jesus was born in Israel, so they should call Israel Christmas Island, technically. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not an island. No. Yeah, true. They should call but it Christmas Land or, or something. Israel's just a mess right now. But Yeah, yeah. You, could go, um, you could continue the video. All right. And trigger gigantic tsunamis, 10 kilometers tall, and go as far inland as Colorado. Every soul left behind will be forever damned, eventually to go straight down to heck. That is a straight contradiction right there, because he said, um, if you left, if you left to, d if you're left behind, you automatically go to hell. That's not what it says in the Bible. In the Bible, you like if you're not raptured you have to survive and you have to prove your loyalty to god basically. and it's uh and then earth becomes a new hell more or less yeah and then, and then um earth. when god like when god comes down he's going to defeat the devil and all the humans that are still alive he's going to like, have them trapped on earth for, like a thousand years and like teach them new things and then like a thousand years like bring them into you know what heaven. triton like that's I think, how it works. I think you need to do the math and start making your own rapture. Or your own rapture. <laughs> yeah. So, in 2,000 years, I took a shit, and I died, and that means the rapture's Just, gonna happen. That's you know what? Now. Like, the rapture probably already happened once. I'm surprised there's no crazy belief like that. 
There probably, probably is. You know, I've actually heard shit. I've heard I've heard shit like that of all, that the rapture already happened. I don't I don't think so. Like, cause there's just so many like. There's still like so many Christians left. Like there's no. Like, there's so many different no religions way. too, which would kind of explain if that happened. I mean. Yeah, but still, like this, there wouldn't be a billion Christians if a rapture happened. Like I just don't believe that would be possible. Well, I mean, how many Christians do you really think are gonna send Triton? I mean, let's be honest here. A lot of people are hypocritical. A lot of people read the Bible yeah. but don't practice it. So. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> lot, I mean, but that's the thing. I mean, that, that that's why Jesus died for like our sins, though. Is yeah, so we can be forgiven for it. Cause that's the thing. Everyone sins. Everyone. I mean, even if you, even if you're religious or not, everyone does bad things in their life. Religious, like if you're religious or not, it doesn't matter. Like you'll, you'll fuck up like one day. Like if you think you haven't fucked up yet, you will one day. And that's okay to fuck up. Like, it's okay to, like, make mistakes, obviously, because that's human. You just have to grow from it. Learn from it, improve yourself, and become better. That's the whole premise. And not be a whiny from. bitch, and, um, and not take, like, you have to take responsibility. You have to take the L sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, you can continue this. I All love right. this, by the way. I love it, too. Now, let's not go lumping everyone in. Most Christian groups did not believe in Harold Camping's teachings. In fact, most Christian groups don't believe in predicting the rapture at all, and even consider it a sin. Matthew 24, 36 specifically says that no man can know the day or the hour. So to try and guess exactly. at it would be to go against scripture. Accordingly, Protestant and Catholic exactly. groups denounce like Mr. Camping's claims. May 21st, he's a follower of Harold Camping. What if the it happened? The scriptures do not teach that. No man I knows thought he would that be. It actually happened. In fact, even Camping's own producer at Family Radio said it was a bad idea. But that didn't stop Mr. Wait. Camping. Pause he it. saw the big churches as corrupt. Play it back a little bit to that screenshot. What state is it in? I told you I live with a bunch of oh. stupid fucks, Triton. <laughs> I told you. This, the, the state of Illinois is full of morons. I hate to say it. I hate to be honest, that, but I'm, I've I'm never met anyone smart from Illinois. It's so few and wild. <laughs> it's so few. Oh. Uh, as bad as Florida. <laughs> I don't know, man. I feel Illinois is definitely up there if they're predicting the rapture and they're just like, we're doing it. <laughs> We're going all in. <laughs> we know we we know we strike the a, a, a two on our blackjack and a one on our other card. I know we strike the total of three, but we're going all in and we're hitting triples. <laughs> like I know we're sitting at nineteen, but we're gonna hit it and we're gonna go all in. Oh, uh, I just wanted to point that out. That was funny. We can keep going. Idea. But that didn't stop Mr. Camping. He saw the big churches as corrupt anyway, so he ignored them and continued charging forward with his prediction. There's Wee. just no reason in the world, no possibility that it will not happen. And so did his followers. 97% of the people God will destroy. Do you think camping could do the? Do you think uh, this thing is getting blown up too would much be gone? in the media and elsewhere? Yeah, they should. Before we go on, two important details. Number one, Family Radio receives most of its funding through donations, bequeathments, yep. ads, merchandise, and sponsors, but mostly just donations. Two. Family Radio was established in 1959, Camping is the owner and CEO, but there are two other chairmen on board to keep him in check. Or at least there were. Unfortunately, in recent years, those other chairmen were getting quite old and sick and having a tougher and tougher time telling Camping no to poor decision making. <laughs> so by 2010, Camping effectively had free reign over the company. Free reign over its messaging free reign over its audience, and free reign over the spending. And he started spending like, well, like the world was going to end. The media soon picked up on the ubiquitous advertising, and the word spread further. This 
in turn encouraged more advertising and in turn more media interest, so things were snowballing. By early May, everyone was talking about the rapture. The search term end of the world May 21st was number two on Google search, followed by Harold Camping, May 21st Doomsday, and May 21 Rapture, also in the top 10. The traffic online was so substantial, it even caused Family Radio's service to crash. Soon, it became a bit of a meme. And the internet did what it does best. Yep, here comes the internet. On May 19th, Operation Rapture was conceived. Okay, lads, we wake up early on May 21st and throw clothes into the street. It's going to look like a bunch of people were teleported to the afterlife, and hopefully some of them are going to freak out. Well, they had a pretty good turnout, but it doesn't seem like anyone fell for it. Disappointingly, it seems like no one showed up for the pre-rapture orgy organized on Facebook either. Although maybe that's because the location was a bit better. But this streets of America, baby. was an event organized by the Phenomenauts. They got people together in the middle of town and filled a bunch of sex dolls with helium and attached them to balloons <laughs> to transcend into the heavens. It was a beautiful moment, and it made a lot of us reflect. <laughs> Pause it real quick. People also tried to. The sex dolls and the orgy make this video so much better by the by default. <laughs> like the actual screenshot of that in the streets of America, baby. <laughs> Triton, don't, don't don't sit there and tell me that's not funny shit. This that is definitely <laughs> <laughs> like they put sex dolls. The fucking street. To fucking after. Like, oh, With, he, they attach them to Healy and just let them float away. Uh bye, bye. We should make this. Uh, we should make this a holiday. We should have like a imagine, national rapture um, day. Imagine like, uh, imagine like how God's feeling that a bunch of sex dolls are just coming into heaven. He'd be like, <laughs> Why are the Hubert's sending me sex dolls? <laughs> <laughs> like we should have a national rapture day Probably on may 21st to where like we just do this every 21st may 21st and like it's just a national holiday because we survived another year without a rapture that's what you we should what, do you know what i you know what i just thought of at the top of my head we should every may 21st on the show we should do a rapture stream yes yes we just like yeah, we're like just that. yeah that'd be great I just, just you just like, see me with a sex doll blowing it up with helium and letting it float away. <laughs> we all we all fully have to do that. Me, be, you, and Cole. We all, it, we all fully have to do that every year. It'd be great. It really would. It would definitely be one to make some cash off the situation. They offered to buy Camping's followers' stuff on Craigslist for pennies on the dollar. Offering to buy on Craigslist raptured people's possessions. There was also a famous eBay auction, $100,000 post-rapture insurance for only $19.99. But one startup did do quite well. Dog sit for those called up to heaven. Based around taking other people's pets in the event of a rapture. And I believe they still operate today. So up next, we'll show you what happened on May 21st and what happened to all those people who truly believed. But first... My rhymes are fly, my beats are sick, my crew is big and it keeps getting bigger. That's cause Jesus Christ is my... Bad time. <laughs> Who's there? Hello, it's me. Oh my God, it's Jesus. What are you doing here? Well, I just wanted to tell you that me and God have seen your Google search history and were very disappointed. Oh no. That's right, and now you're not getting into heaven, or the more exclusive version, Super Heaven, which features a delicious seafood buffet. Oh no! Yup. Oh, how I wish I had taken the time to hide my internet viewing habits. Well, you didn't, and now you're doomed five ever. Has this ever happened to you? Go to nordvpn.com slash internethistorian to keep your website traffic anonymous. All looks wholesome to me. Plus, it also gives you region unlocking. Oh, hey, look, 
It's the UK's exclusive channels. And you didn't even pay a telly license. Oi, oi, stop that. That'll be £52.9 thruppence. Too late, copper. I've brexited to Australia Trade. now, a place where no law can touch me. How much would you pay for this awesome. service? A billion dollars. All right. Start back up? Yeah, go for it. Through a chicken. It was dubbed the Prophet Hen of Leeds because it started laying eggs with the message Christ is coming marked onto them. Amazing. And it all appeared legit. Locals saw the hen lay eggs with the message already written onto them. Can't fake that. Oh my god, people said, and many more flocked to the area to pray. Well, on inspection of the eggs, it was soon figured out what was going on. Mary Bateman had used a corrosive substance to etch into the egg, and then, a couple of minutes before everyone would gather around to watch the chicken lay, Mary would... Oh dear. Come on, come on, man. It's not funny. She was an interesting character, though. Claimed to be a witch. Poisoned a couple that same year with a deadly pudding. She was later tried and hanged in 1809. Strips of skin from her corpse were tanned and sold as magic charms to ward off evil spirits. What the fuck am I reading? <laughs> also, shout out to 2012. Remember that one? As December 21st, 2012 marks the end of the world. Well, we came because it's the end of the world tomorrow and we thought we'd better pop in here because apparently this place will be saved. With accents like those, you would hope they'd be the first to go come the apocalypse. Okay, okay, let's get on with it. Damn! Let's take a closer look <laughs> at some of the people ruthless. who followed camping. Take Robert Fitzpatrick, 60, former... That right, newscaster so you, was ruthless, said, bro. How do you, um, they literally say it's the end of the world, but like, oh, this place is safe, like, this should be this no safe place if it's the end of the world, like, you're fucked no matter what. Yeah. But that, that news reporter was ruthless. Like, holy shit. He yeah. definitely was. <laughs> that was like, that was, uh, that was like I'm gonna raise my cup to that one, ruthless. honestly. But no, that was, that was crazy. Honestly, that was, uh, yeah, like, um, this is, uh, we're getting to the point in the video where we start to see, like, people believing in this and losing everything, more or less, and it's really fucking sad. But they're gullible and they're dumb. Meanwhile, the internet was like, haha, sex doll, go into space. <laughs> 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 Woo, National Orgy Day. In the streets of America, of baby. Joke, I can't believe it's a lot of average jokes that believe this, Bill. Yeah, these are, like, people with, like, actual lives and businesses and children and shit. It's, like, I mean, I would, wow. then again, you gotta think, like, their site was down, so you couldn't do any research on the actual company, I'm pretty sure. And if you did, like, I don't know. I feel like it was kind of a gray zone on information, trying to find out, like, about the group that discovered this rapture. But I don't think a lot of people believed in it, either. I really don't, like, I mean, I think the people that believed kind of deserved it, to believe in something dumb like this, because, you know, you're defying yeah, scripture like, it's itself. it's obvious dumb, like, people with common sense, like, normal people know that this is dumb. Like, yeah. You believe this, you have to, like, this is something wrong, there's no way, like, a normal, everyday person is actually gonna believe in this dumb shit. I, I mean, mean... My family never believed in this. Yeah, but I mean, it depends on how crazy of a Christian you are, really. I think it's not too far fetched to believe that people would follow this. I think it's far fetched to believe that but people would like follow this and lose everything. Like, it's hypocritical to Christianity itself. Like, that's why I don't understand why a lot of Christians are falling for it, because this, these beliefs are clearly contradicting what's in the Bible. Well, here's another factor, too. What's the point of selling your possessions if you're going to heaven anyway? Exactly. What, what, like, uh, like the first segment of his, like, rapture belief prophecy was a, a tidal wave or whatever, right? That means everything's destroyed, right? So, why care about your stuff anyway? If anything, why this would be... getting money? If, if anything, at this point, it would be based... Like, if you were, like, a true believer of the Bible, your possessions would mean nothing and you would just go straight to the Bible. You go straight to scripture and you become, like, more more religious off of it, right? 
Like, if you were already yeah. a Christian, you would go straight to your Bible, you would go straight to prayer, you would hope for the best and expect the worst, and you would devout yourself. You wouldn't be paranoid running into the forests, selling all your possessions, moving your kids away, acting like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're actually following the Bible, you would not be following it the way these people were, where they're selling everything, they're doing all this extra shit that they didn't need to do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And then if it didn't work, you still had all your stuff. So, and you just became yep. more with God, I guess, in some instance, or more closer to your scripture. And then you realize that your pastor was a liar and a fiend and a scoundrel. And you don't believe in that pastor anymore. A scam artist. Or what you hear. And yeah, a pile of garbage. It's like, um, to be fair, so hard, so I like, feel I bad. I like why a lot of, I'll go ahead. I feel bad calling like this pastor a scumbag but like he's because he's like 70 something years old and you know this is what i mean when there should be like a limit of who should have the right to own a company i feel like age is a big factor in that because how many how many of these pastors are like past their 60s and are just making billions but and, and just senile like, and crazy oh, it doesn't give them this justification to act like a scumbag but you don't know when a person's mental health declines because they have so much money that they can fake a mental health screening. They can well, easily pay a doctor yeah, that's off. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. There should be like an age limit on the CEOs of these big companies that that have media access like this. This would yeah, never this happen. Yeah, there should be um age limit on the president. There's Joe Biden and barely fucking speak as it is. They barely think. Yeah. I mean, there, that's a factor in a lot of things. Have you seen our Supreme Court, bud? They're all dinosaurs. Yeah, I and know. Half like, of them no, they, like, a lot of the Supreme Court might like, need to retire. Like our Congress isn't too Supreme, bad, though. Yeah, I don't think our yeah, Congress no, is too bad. Congress isn't too bad. It's mainly the Supreme Court that's like filled with a bunch of oldies. Yeah, but uh, we can go and continue. I'm a government employee. I had plans after I retired, but uh, I put them all aside. I, I feel as if I've been drafted. He took almost all of his life savings, $140,000, to have 3,000 posters put up in New York City subways and bus stops. I'm not going to tell you I'm down to my last penny, but, you know, it's a good chunk of what I had saved up, sure. Does it matter if you're down to your last penny, if the doomsday is coming? No, it doesn't. And he's not the only one. According to the LA Times, the Bauer family hopped in their minivan and drove across the country to see all of the big landmarks before it was too late racking up thousands of dollars in credit card debt in the process. They really believed they were going to die. Worse still, the Ramsey family. The father quit his job. So did his mum. His younger brother quit high school. And his wife Marcia thought she was never going to meet her unborn child. Some of these people's lives got pretty fucked up. Yeah. That's a big factor of it. Over dumb shit. Over believing in dumb shit. And the like day I said, is here. Scripture. Like I said, it goes down to scripture. Like, if if you told me tomorrow was my last day, I would be apologizing to the grudges that I've had for people that wronged me, even if I wasn't entirely entitled to that. You know, it, it, like, I would not be holding grudges. This was a time for families to come together and become one. You know what I mean? Like understanding each other, letting go of whatever secrets or lies or whatever, yeah. letting like, that's the good part of it. Th I mean, that's how it should have gone. But these, but like every example of this is just people being dumb and like, I'm going to go spend as much money as I can and then do my trip. And then when I, and then when the rapture comes, I'll be okay. And it's like, yeah, that's one thought oh, process, that's but like, that's works. not, Worldly possessions is something the Bible is against. <laughs> like, on a couple verses, I'm pretty sure. It's easier yeah, for like, a man yeah, with... Like, uh, I would be even, like, if you told me tomorrow's my last day and I was going to get raptured, I would uh, apologize to everybody that I've wronged, and I would um, let go of all the grudges I have in my life, and I would have a lot of negativity. And, and, and you would... And you would... get raptured. And you would, uh, and you would walk a path of tranquility and a path of, you know, like more nature bound, more 
connected to scripture more to the concept or the, you know, the morals of the Bible to a degree. And there's nothing yeah, wrong with that. Definitely. And that's how you should be. That's how wrong. the, that's how the rapture is pretty much represented in the Bible. Like before you read, I'm pretty sure a couple stories before the revelations, it mentions how that's where all the verses are on worldly possessions. That's where most of the verses are on how it's easier for, uh, how it's hard for a rich man to go into heaven, similar to like the walking through the eye of a needle or something like that. Like there's a lot of verses that are specifically about letting go of worldly desires and, and, you know, setting down, like, I mean, leaving your job is kind of extreme, but it's, it's reasonable because at the same time, it's like, okay, if we're going to die, why should I die at work? It deserves to have exactly. time with my family. That's understandable. But like straight up, just like going on a huge ass tr field trip through the country is kind of dumb. And I feel bad for a lot of the pregnant women I mean, that money, were around like, during this. Like, like money, like at that point, money doesn't matter. Exactly. Like the world's going to end. Money doesn't matter. Your bills and dollars aren't going to matter when there's a hellscape on earth, right? So why have it? Why need it? I bet you exactly. some dude probably built a bunker. I have no doubt. Some rich dude probably built a bunker when he heard this rapture thing. Alright, cold fire. You can, probably. We can go and continue. It's rapture time. Here we go. Oh lord, I'm ready. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a rapture. Watch me, guys. Mr. Camping spent the day at home in quiet solace and contemplation, waiting for 6 p.m. But that's not what Mr. Fitzpatrick did. A confident Fitzpatrick marched into the middle of Times Square amongst a crowd of mocking bystanders, ready to prove everyone wrong. In three minutes, if it does not happen, what will that mean? I wouldn't entertain that question. You're confident. That's what I read in the Bible. Here it comes. Three. Two. One. Nothing happened. This dude did it to himself. And then 601. 602. And by 603, Fitzpatrick's convictions turned to confusion. And it's pretty hard not to feel sorry for him. I didn't water my plants. I didn't do the dishes before I left. I didn't expect to be going back home. But it looks like I will be going back home. But look, just so we're clear, we're all still alive. And the rapture didn't happen. <laughs> Camping was not in the same celebratory mood. I'm ready to shoot myself. Go on a <laughs> the next day was a Sunday. People were crushed, confused, looking for answers. They showed up at Camping's church expecting to see him, but someone else was holding the congregation. Instead, Camping spent the day hauled up in his house. Give me a day. No, no interviews at all today. But I'm wondering how you feel today about the uh, your prediction. Well, I'm bewildered. I'm very bewildered, and that's all I can say right now. He sounded like he was going to cry. On Monday, he appeared on his program. But this time, no open forum. But what he did have was a whole bunch of rationalizations. In fact, your boy was doubling down with another prediction. October 21st, <laughs> 2011. <laughs> And uh, this is it. Uh, it. And it will continue right up until uh, uh, October 21, 2011. And uh, at that time, the whole world will be destroyed. Now, now I know what you're going to say. And okay, maybe he got it slightly wrong. But this time he has irrefutable proof of the rapture. Using math again. So camping took May 21st. Then he looked in the book of John, which states they caught 153 fish. So add 153 days to May 21st, 
making the new rapture October 21st. <laughs> How can you argue? It's flawless. Yes, Mr. Camping. Add the fish number. You've got it this time. On Tuesday, he opened the phones on his radio show, and it was the first time that his show was ever exciting to watch. Uh, why didn't the rapture happen on May 21st? Don't cut me off yet. And why do you believe so much on it's going to happen another five months? You're, you're really pathetic. You know, I wasted all my money, and I sent it to you. And I, and I don't all right, nothing. pause it real quick. My hope. Who's more pathetic? The guy that believed the rapture was going to happen? Or the pastor that said the rapture was going to happen. Like... Probably the guy, I mean... Like, these are people spending their hard-earned money believing in something the Bible says not okay, to follow. Look, um, I want to... I'm going to make a point, right? I understand if you, like, believe that, you know... Like, I'm not going to fault you too much if you believe... Like, if you believe that the rapture is coming and you, like, you know, take precautions... If you spend all your money <laughs> knowing that money's not going to even matter when that happens, you're just dumb. You're just dumb. Yeah. It's like, why like, Why not just spend time with your family and if, just pray? If anything, that's kind of more sinful when you think about it, because you're giving into your fucking worldly desires. Exactly. That's <laughs> what, like, how do these people claim that so, the so, they don't even So, hy- hypothetical, Triton. Rapture happens. None of these people that spent money are going <laughs> because they gave into their worldly desires of what they wanted to do. Yeah, instead of like instead of praying and you know asking God for the forgiveness, spending all your money, getting all everything you want. God, I bet the casinos made bank, <laughs> bro. I bet they did. I bet you they were filled on May twenty first or May twentieth. I bet you. That's wild. That's wild to think about. I wonder how many other things got hit like really hard too. I bet the housing market crashed a little bit, or the or oh, the really? the economy probably like tanked a good bit, because like, you know, people were just charging their cards and just being dumb. Oh my god. I I can't imagine what what how if the families are possibly still paying some of that debt off. To be fair, if I followed this and I ended up racking up that much credit card debt, like a hundred grand or something, I would just blow my brains out. That's easier. Sure, like they could argue that a relative has to pay it, but do they really? Like I already told Savannah, I already told uh, Shiro my um, my plans. Like if I ever got cancer or whatever, I'm just gonna get a bunch of credit cards and just max them the fuck out. Get a Ferrari and just drive around the country till I'm dead and just party. Party hardy. I ain't going through chemo or radiation. I see that deteriorating my mother. And that's just miserable in itself. Yeah. But yeah, we can go ahead and continue. Hey. Okay, you. you understand? I, I wish I could see you face to face. I'd smack you right in the... What <laughs> say you now? Calling names doesn't help anything. After that, viewership steadily declined. Now, after his prediction for October 21st, the media asked him, Am I on cocaine? No, they asked him, Will you dissolve the company in October? His response? I am not the CEO. I'm a servant of God working here, and God is the CEO. We look to him all the time. He has a thousand ways of getting me out of here. We have to leave that question with the Lord, not with you or with me. That's not our business. That's God's business. And how prescient. Because two weeks later, he had a stroke. I do hope he gets the message. But he didn't. A month later, he was back to doing his show. And he pressed on with his new prediction. By October 16th, though, he came to his senses. He admitted that no man could know exactly when the rapture would happen, and made no statement when October 21st came and went. Finally, on November 1st, he retired from his leadership position at Family Radio. I bet, I bet you when, he, I bet you when he did that, all those people that spent all the money 
Oh, so fucking stupid. I bet you they were fucking mad and wanted to beat him. I mean, God did assassinate him with a heart attack. Let's be honest here. He was talking about God, and then two weeks later, he's gone in the ground. You know, dead. <laughs> so, that kind of... I'm going to be real. That's kind of benevolent in itself a little bit. Like, <laughs> like that's kind of an example of God right there. Like... <laughs> I mean, he lied to billions of people, and then he had to face the backlash of that. And then he's like, well, I'm not the CEO. God is. And then, you know, God was like, gone. (laughs) No. That's it for you. And, like, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, I guess we'll go. God probably having a long, God probably had a long (laughs) conversation with him. (laughs) um i like i like to imagine that like um in a way when you think about it it's like all these people that are mad and then he dies are they still mad because if they are then like they're not following the bible any they weren't gonna go they weren't gonna be wholly saved by the rapture they were gonna they're already gone because they spent all their money like like i said earlier this is this is a, a very fun episode though. I love this, like jumping from Definitely. video to video. Um you think Copeland how do you think Cope like you think Copeland will eventually cause a rapture like this? Probably. I mean likely. he would say some demons are coming out of the grounds for us. That's what he'll say, and then he'll sneak his hand into our pocket. I could see him doing that. I see him doing that. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'd like to, like, you know what place I would love to take Copeland is, like, a casino? That would be hilarious. You just take him to a casino, and then he just starts yelling at the jackpot machine for it to win, yell, screaming, like, demon shit. It'd be funny. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, this is and- a palace of greed and sin. Y'all going to hell. You're all demons. I could hear it. I could hear it in my head, bro. <laughs> You go to the casino worker and be like, you are a demon, you're working for demons. Yeah, yeah, Satan runs this company. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's definitely fascinating. Um, But, nah, like, I think with this guy, with camping, it's definitely kind of sad because I think this is an example of, like, old age and he probably wasn't in the right frame of mind when he said this rapture shit anyway. He probably had a lot of bad influences encourage him to. Probably. It was like, I like I feel like a lot of people like believe, like, in this camp knew this was bullshit, but they just did it just for like attention and shit. Probably. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird dilemma. We can go ahead and keep playing it though. It's got like three minutes left. It's a funny to cover though. Yeah. It's a little bit of everything. You can continue, though. Just under two years later, he was dead. The result of complications from a fall at his home. It it wasn't big, it was... Him! Look at him! Get him! But look, I don't want to be too harsh. He was a flawed man. He messed up some people's lives. But in the end, he confessed his mistakes too. I was totally convinced, totally convicted of it, but I was wrong. I was wrong. I have sinned. I think he truly believed the rapture was coming. This wasn't one big grift. And everyone just kind of got swept up in the excitement of it all. So let's put a bow on it with what happened to Family Radio. During the Rapture campaign, Family Radio raised a lot of money, but not as much as they spent. As well as draining their funds, they sold off important radio stations to pay for a lot of the advertising. In the process, they greatly tarnished their reputation. They were bringing in scores of millions in revenue in 2011, but by 2012, it was down to single-digit millions. Now, this is still a substantial amount, but not when you consider their operating costs were 26 million dollars per year and they couldn't rely on donations to make up the windfall because goodwill had dried up 
Now, with fewer radio stations and a shrinking reach, they moved to distance themselves from camping and his baggage. Shows from mainstream Christian groups that Harold pronounced as corrupt were brought into the programming schedule. They announced they would no longer air the teachings of Mr. Camping. And finally, on their website, they removed the archives of Mr. Camping's audio recordings. Okay, I've kind of bummed everyone out, but that's the end of the story. I've got nothing else to say. So here's a whole bunch of weird Baroque and Renaissance paintings. (laughs) 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 What? Anything else on the docket? Uh, Yeah, we got the compilation, which I think is going to be, you're going to love it, Triton. You're going to absolutely love this, I think. Watching the whole thing? Uh, your call. We can stop whenever. Alright, but explain the whole, like, the compilation to the audience now. It's just Preacher's Gone Wild. Uh, (laughs) that's the, I didn't watch it, because I wanted to save it for the show. I just know it's going to be great. It's going to be like the Copeland thing, I think. And it's going to be great. So go for it, Cool Fire. Alright. What's wrong with you, black women? What's wrong with you voting for Barack Obama? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with y'all? You niggas are crazy! (laughs) 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 We're already starting off strong, Tony. We're already starting off strong. (laughs) This is a church I need to go to right here. I need this in a gym church. What did he just say right here? What did he say, Brother Mel? But they that are such uh-huh. serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. But who? But their own belly. Jake the snake, long the midget, <laughs> dollar the rich pimp, all these folk. Old line float through Joe Osteen, old sorry Paula White. Oh, knuckle dragon looking Joyce Meyer, all of them they ain't serving God, they serve their own belly. Yes, sir. Carton pills and all the rest of them. Yes, sir. Earl Pope Mohammed. All of them they ain't serving on our God, they serve their own belly. Yes, sir. Listen. And by good word. And by good word. And woman fair. died out loose. Mm-hmm. Now that hypocrite don't come out with a move. I hope none Can of my people ain't dumb quick? enough to go see it. Can I just say that like an episode of like if you could get like two pastors on from two churches that don't like each other and just each give them an open mic it would probably make the best show ever oh yeah I could actually I mean I'm saying that because this guy's calling out like Joe Osteen and like all of these churches that are obviously bigger than his and he's just like they all serve in themselves and I love it this is the energy churches need right here just calling each other out it's just making beef (laughs) Like they start, they it's both pray, but it's, it's like, not, like definitely. they I have like a that happens like twenty four. I wonder if it happens like current day. I'll definitely start. I will definitely get in the middle of that. Cover that. Imagine, the uh, imagine if like they have a pray off Triton. Like who can yeah. pray the loudest and more like energy? I would put Copeland up with uh with this guy, one hundred percent. Copeland, I think Copeland would win, but I don't know. I, 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 man, like, Copeland or Jewel Osteen against each other would be hilarious. Just two billionaires yelling about the Bible at each other. It'd be great. It'd make good TV. All right, we can continue. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, we can continue. Then that's gonna put up there and gonna have you something you come in and send a prayer, a send a prayer. No, you gonna make a fool out you in the movie. No son of crap. they will make a good move. Have you crying? You be talking about Jay Wright. We ain't never was a more nasty sinner saved by grace. He walk in the movie straight and you come out there like this right here. Well, stay out of there. Well, sister, I'm going to come back in full of bull dagger. 
and he got the right folk to draw you know some girl with some weed and Mari coconut right. <laughs> he's dumb enough to be sitting out with him he know them women stupid by him and Denzel <laughs> He know the right one and drag him in, man. He ain't even like, preaching. He's, he's just over there ranting, bro. Mar, that's the devil <laughs> you, Mar. He's, just, he's, he's going off record. I ain't even care for Mars the cat. No, I don't care for cocoa nuts. He put the Bible on the back burner and was like, yeah, we're going to. I'm going to speak my mind. A nut is a nut, ain't it? Yes, sir. This <laughs> <laughs> is a horse, of course, of course. <laughs> Boaz has some relatives, and if you don't watch it, you won't get the one well, God has for idea. you. You'll get we his relatives whole, to the girls. I found this on the internet. Girl. We has, definitely Boaz should. Boaz is spelled B-O-A-Z. Everybody say next B-O-A-Z. Episode? I think that'd be good for next episode. A preaching right. tier list. Copeland, day, I can tell you right now, if Copeland doesn't get A or above, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> that boy <laughs> knows how to talk. <laughs> we got the demons in him. He going wild. You know, let's give me your money. Give me your money, Triton. Give me your money. I ain't flying first class, boy. I'm flying private. <laughs> <laughs> I love that dude. Like, if I could, if I found out, like, he's near me, I'm going to go to his church at least once. I know it'll be a fucking trip. That would oh, be worth the he, trip. Isn't he out of, he out of Illinois? Uh, I can check. I don't think so. Oh, that was the. Yeah, that was a camper. Let me see. Right. We can play it. I'm checking where he's from. Oh, uh, Texas. He's from Texas. He's the. Oh yeah, he's the guy that burned the Koran. Yeah. Um. When uh. Oh, what was it? When Sutherland Springs got shot up, he burned the Koran. Yeah, in Texas. He he was like oh. making big news too. Uh he also burned a couple other things. He's kinda crazy. Um <laughs> We definitely need to make a pastor tier list. They're all wild. <laughs> he might have not been the one that burned the crayon. Let me look it up. It was Terry Jones, and he was like super radical and crazy. He's another pastor that I probably should have put on here. Um he was in Florida. Damn, so he's near me. I gotta go to. I gotta go to this. I should. He he's <laughs> he's like a full blown. Uh, yeah, he burned the Quran in response to this the nine eleven attacks, and he got like a he's lot of shit for dead it. Now. Is, wait, is he still? Is he still? He's seventy two right now. Damn, so he's still alive. So his church might still be a thing. Um, he's a part of some very questionable groups. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> like that's all I'm gonna say. He is not. Yeah. He ain't good. Um. Uh, let me see here. He's like he invoked violence and shit when a Barack Obama became president, and he burned an effigy yeah. of Barack Obama along with Bill Clinton. I don't like. I don't. I don't like Barack Obama, but I don't support violence on people. I don't he was like. Um, he was kind of. He's kind of crazy. Kind of funny, kind of crazy though. Yeah, I, I like we gotta like I'm gonna be honest. Like, there's so many different pastors that are just wild. That like when we do a tier list, we really gotta like address why they're there on that spot. Cause there are so yeah, many yeah, wild pastors. Like we should go through like the ones that are dead and still alive, in their congregations. And yeah, stuff. we'll definitely. Yeah, yeah, it'll no, we'll it'll be a that, good one. Which, um, which off the air, like we'll discuss more like how we'll do it, and then um, Monday night we'll set it up again. I'm pretty sure there was a pastor that burned Yeah, you could, yeah, you could get to the fire because little fish is up something with that. And so he's got some relatives called broke ass, po ass, lying ass, cheating ass, dumb ass, drunk I'm, ass, don't I'm, go out with him, cheap I'm, ass, turn to somebody and say I dated him. Locked up ass, good for nothing ass, lazy ass. And especially his third cousin beating your ass. Wait on your bow ass and make sure he respects your ass. Now there's your word. Is you this a pastor responding to a black pastor? Quit 
Okay. Is this the trip piece I was talking about? Let God take you through the yeah. wilderness. <laughs> Good. 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 Sunday morning started out like any Sunday at the Middlesbrough Church. The Abrams family was there, and me and little Cody and wife and the kids and everybody. And he's preaching on the signs. And the oh, they got the up. snake pairs, bro. Next thing I know, the serpent he had in his right hand had struck and beat him in the side of the face. Never heard of that. It started in like he's Tennessee, in and like Oklahoma. They let a snake bite them and they bleed all over the Bible. Up, he was coming up to the Bible stand there, and he had blood on his shirt. He was coughing, like, really bad. I thought he was coughing up blood. I didn't know. But he, he could barely breathe. Like, his throat was starting to swell and stuff. And I was scared. I called him and him out of my car. And he told me to take him to the mountaintop and let him die. Oh, he was going to live, he'd live. If he was going to die, he'd die on the mountaintop. I said, come week. We were talking about Lot. <laughs> You've been on alcohol or drugs. There's 15 devils. <laughs> and I saw the Lord. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Out of him, you foul devils. In the name of Jesus, thank God. Get ready, get ready. This is the power of God. Come out of us. This is the power of God. 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 The to go to the top she said she's been having pain on her left side and her shoulder for over three months and she said after having prayer right now right now a, pair, a hand is it burning or, or just a hand just feel it you think it's jesus uh, yeah Let me tell you, I will address this attack from the pit of hell. Every liar, you going to burn. God going to deal with you. Every person who has spoken, I'm going to address baby. this in the Holy Ghost. You people that support me, believe in the anointing, the ministry, and the man upon my life, I'm going to tell you this very clearly. And I'll go into detail in Houston. I ain't never had to follow no witch. Witches follow me. I ain't never had to follow no witch. I'll make it very clear. I will address this in Houston, Texas, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost Texas, bro? the 48 hours of... Why is it always Texas? Right or wrong? Why, is it Why is it always Texas? And, like, because, okay. Uh... Historically, with the witches' packs, right? Like, back in, like, the 1800s and stuff. The only thing that witches followed was Baphomet. Right? That's where they, like, had their whole little pack thing. There's, like, a whole, like, um... There's an old image from, like, the 1800s or whatever of it. And, like, they kiss the ass of, like, ba Baphomet or whatever. And, like, so him sitting here saying that, like, witches follow him, he's comparing himself to a demon. I don't think he realizes that. But, uh, <laughs> we need to get Copeland in there and get him checked out. We need to have Copeland go in there and check him out. Yeah, we need, we need, to, get, um, we need to get our um, demon expert. Yeah, that. our demon scientist. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he is. He's a demon doctor. He's going to exercise a lot more than just demons out of you. He's going to exercise that wallet, too. Like, if you told me Copeland ran a casino, I would believe it. 100%. He has that would energy. Would you go to his casino? I would. I would hope it was, like, Jesus-themed, like, slot machines. That would be great. Same here. I would go. I, mean, I would probably go. 
Like, a church of, like, we, there should just be a church that's, like, pro casinos and gambling, and then they just, they don't, like, they just do it as, a, like, a like a side hustle. And, like, the pastor comes out on a zipline. I think that'd be cool. Like, a, like I mean, obviously every church would hate it. Well, 100%, but, like, still. And then, you like, when them playing the holy, like, they could have holy slot machines, and when they play them, they're getting blessed. The money is a blessing, not a curse. The gambling isn't a sin. It's being blessed sins. It's a sin that is no longer there. It is being absolved. See? See, Triton? I could totally run a church. I could totally, like, make this happen. <laughs> the church of Nith, or... Yeah. Church of Nithy. The greedy little <laughs> Nithy. But yeah, we can continue. We can finish this. Game. Touch! That's it! Superman! Come on! Come on! Yes! 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 You got the ah! Try and they got the ah! You love the Holy Spirit like me. Ah! Ah! See, when you get into discipleship, your focus change. You're not looking at a man. You're not looking at no woman. You're looking at what this is the most feminine man. The most feminine black man who's in the Bible I've ever seen in my life. I don't want you sticking your I don't want you. I don't want you in because I don't want to receive a brand new hip replacement. Ah! Hip. Is that you? Stand right here, please. Do you have pain right now? You need a surgery, don't you? I just, the power of God's going to surge through your body. Stretch forth your hands. She's supposed to have a surgery to correct this hip problem. I have faith in God. Come Holy Spirit, that right now she's going to be healed by the power of God. Yeah, and all of a these brand new are hip. Do it, Jesus. In case a you didn't brand know that. It's like a bam, damn secret. Bam, bam, bam. Like bam, 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 like, bam, they always get busted. Bam, 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 uh, bam, bam, when bam, when they bring bam, someone up, bam, it's like this lady's harm, this lady's hurting. Oh, she ain't okay. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, it's, a lot of it's staged. Yeah, like, I, I yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot of it's really crazy. Um, you can't even trust like the priests that claim to be the good guys. Like, I feel like a good, I feel like a good pastor is one that like walks with his flock, talks with them, helps them through their issues and their problems, and like helps them with scripture. I had a great, like I had a great pastor growing up though. I'm not gonna lie, like my I did. I had a, I had a female good. pastor in Texas, and man, she used to get treated really badly, but she was a great pastor. When I was in the Methodist church. She actually did a lot of fundraisers and stuff for the poor. Like they, uh, at one point, they opened up their doors around Christmas, and they would have yeah, like when, the homeless. Yeah, when I had a um, when I had a relative, when I had a relative pass away, um, the the pastor himself literally sent like the the church to give us like food and bought us like food, water, and yeah, they sure we were all right. Yeah, like it's just uh, it it's. It's crazy, man. Like, there's so many pastors that just feel like zealous, crazy. They get corrupted. Like a lot of the, a lot of the national, like a lot, like the mega if you churches. Want a good pastor, you have to go. You have to go to a church that's not really well known because, like, you know, a local one. It's all well known and on national TV. Like all the pastors are frauds because they're doing all the money. all the mega churches are really bad. Honestly, like Joel Osteen. Did you ever yeah, hear about? Like, did you ever did you ever hear about what he did during that uh hurricane? What do you do? So there was a hurricane blowing in, right? And yeah. I think it was Irma. It might have been a different one, but there was a hurricane hitting and people were like I think it his, is Irma. Yeah, he people were at his doors begging to come in and he had enough space and shelter for them and the building would withstand it, right? He chose not to open his doors at all. Like at all. What the and then it, when the media got hold of it and was questioning him on it, his reasoning was they had mud and water on their shoes and they would stain the church. 
I thought you're not supposed to care about that, though. No. The church is just the house of God. The preachings need to come first at the end of the day, no matter what it is. When people are in need, and, and, and are need of help and need, to, need something there, that's when you open your doors. That's where a church is being a church. And he turned those people away. Exactly. And a lot of them probably died. But yeah, because he doesn't really believe in what he preaches. He's no. a fraud. He's just a it, it's fraud. money in their pocket. That's what it is. And uh, yep. that's what this kind of episode was about. It was uh, some wacky preachers doing some wacky things. I think uh, my favorite one was the Copeland still. But I do like the fact that the guy was praying with snakes and then got bit. That was kind of funny. Um, that is fucking hilarious. The rapture was just depressing. Uh, the rapture, the rapture bit was kind of sad and depressing in itself. Um, yeah, the rapture bit was kind of like just depressing and sad, but it's kind of dumb, like how like people just spent all the money and now like the the world's not even in. I don't like, know, Train. You want to go back to Mars? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I like how we started off with like the most radical, craziest one, and then we just kind of derived into a little bit of everything. Um, there was one clip that we didn't show. Uh, it was the pastor going down on a zip line. That was kind of crazy. That was kind of funny. Um, it'll probably be in the next next show if we do this again, depending on how it goes. But I enjoyed yeah, which, it. Oh, I think the next show is going to be a tier list. I want to actually do the tier list. Yeah, the tier list for the zip line pastor. Fun. Show like a little clip of each pastor before we put it on the tier list would be great. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, we'll get all that set up and everything. It'd be awesome. But, Anyways, uh, um, it seems like um, like coming to an end. I appreciate everyone that's watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow the hosts on you know the socials will be down below. Make sure you join the Discord if you want to get more involved with it within the show and the program. And also make sure you know y'all like turn on notifications so you never miss an episode on the Ravencast. Anyways, it's been me, your host Triton. Your host, Nath, and your host, Kofi, we will see you in the next episode.